right, Psalm chapter 1 this morning. Psalm 1, we'll be reading verse 1 and uh, speak today on the topic, can a Christian have fun? Can a Christian really have fun? Uh, Psalm 1, 1, we know this verse, many of us. <clears throat> it's uh, helpful, I think, for us to um, study it a little bit and then uh, we'll look at a couple other passages as well. Can a Christian really have fun? Well, I figure you're guessing right now that if I'm answering no to that, then uh, this is going to be kind of a depressing message. Yeah, I'm going to end. My conclusion is going to be no. All right, so have a good day. We'll see you at 445 or 515. You can walk through the woods. You can have fun, though, when you do it. Um, so, of course, I'm going, to, I'm going to end up with the word yes at the end of that. Um, but uh, let's, uh, it's interesting that last song we sang, I didn't know that was going to be on there, the joy in serving Jesus, and there is joy in serving Jesus, and, uh, and it's, it's the best joy. But Psalm 1.1, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the sea of the scornful. So we kind of get the negatives out of the way right from the bat, off the bat. As far as this person that's blessed, the word blessed there actually is an exclamation in Hebrew. It it's, uh, really comes across as the idea of, uh, another way to consider it is, oh, the happiness of, exclamation point. Uh, oh, the happiness, oh, the, the, the true joy, not, not just joy like, uh, you know, sometimes in the Christian life, we hear a lot of messages where we have to separate between joy and happiness. It's okay to have joy, uh, you know, we can always have joy, but happiness, no, that's bad because it's bad to be happy because you might not be happy sometimes. So, so happiness is bad, but this deep joy somewhere in the deep reaches of our hearts that rarely comes out might occasionally make an appearance, um, but beware of it, kind of suppress that because you won't be too happy because you might not be happy sometime. And that's not being joyful. So all that um, gets confusing, really. Is it joy? Is it happiness? Is it okay to be happy? What about laugh? How much? How often? What's the, what's the ratio? Laughter, non-laughter for a Christian in a Christian's life? I don't want to cross that because otherwise I'm going to be foolish. Proverbs warns me about being a fool. I don't want to do that. So where does it fall in it? Well, here, this word blessed... Uh, happiness deals with really something that is what we might call shallow or simple. It's just being happy. And uh, the guy that's happy, the person that's happy here, yes, they've said no to some things. Okay, so right off the bat, they've said no to, uh, to a counsel uh, of the ungodly, the way of sinners, and see the scornful. Okay, that's a side. Of course, when we sin, sin's never going to make us happy. I mean, that's the lie of sin. Sin's going to make us happy. Well, we're not going to get happiness through sin. So let's take care of that first. Then, uh, number two, we find this guy, uh, this person, is actually has a, a life of a delight. That's a great word, isn't it? Delight. I mean, they name candy that sometimes. Chocolate. Chocolate delight. Strawberry delight. You know what it means? It doesn't mean it's, like, filled with fiber. It's made out of, like, grains and herbs and naturally occurring things. No, it's, it's got a lot of sugar in it. It's, it's delightful. It, it makes you want to, uh, not, I need a cheeseburger delight for me, but that's delight to me, just cup, double cheeseburger. Five guys, I see not five guys, I see the word delight up there uh, when I pass by that, when I pass by it. Um, but delight, here, that's a great word. Here's a delight. Delight, you know, get a picture of delight and somebody uh, that's delightful. They're, they're light. They're not, they're not burdened. They're not, they don't have a big load that they're just buckled under. No, they're, they're delighting in the law of the Lord and meditating on it. And then verse 3, growing up and out like a tree, a tree that has a, a constant source of water. Uh, it's planted by the rivers of water. So, so that means that the roots are down near the river bank so that whether it's raining or not, they always have the water source. Whether it's a dry drought, what other kind of drought is there? <laughs> whether it's a drought or whether it's rainy season, they, they can, they, they, they're not subject to that. 
because their roots are by permanent water source. And so that's, that's the uh, delight of the person. Yes, they've said no to sin, but uh, they're delighting in the law of the Lord. They're, they're, thinking, they're meditating on it day and night. They're like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It's uh, uh, here the ability to bring forth fruit. That's something valuable that comes from it. But I like this too. Uh, the leaf doesn't wither. Their leaf doesn't. What are the leaves? What value are leaves? Well, they sort of just give you a visual um, uh, update about what the health of the tree is. All right, the leaf's not withering, and so they they, they appear healthy. They actually are healthy because they're producing fruit. At the end of verse three, there, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's where we want to be at. We don't want to be like number four, the ungodly. The ungodly, those that have chosen sin, they've chosen unhappiness, frankly, uh, because uh, they're like chaff. They're like the hulls of the wheat that blows away. The kernel's inside. That's, that's valuable. They're like the, 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 the throwaway part. You know, you're going to eat corn on the cob. You're, you're most likely, unless you're starved, you're not going to eat the husks. I mean, you might be super duper hungry one day. You're like, just give me the butter and the salt. I'm eating them husk and all. Uh, probably not. So the husk's kind of like chaff. You're going to peel it. You're going to throw it away. It's no good. Um, so the ungodly like the chaff. It's, it's, uh, there's no value there. The wind drives it away. Why? Because they, they chose sin. They lost happiness because they chose sin. Sin says, choose me. You'll have happiness. The opposite is the, is the case. So can a Christian have joy? Can a Christian be just happy? Absolutely. It's the ungodly. It's those that have chosen sin that they can't be, really. And uh, so we've got uh, uh, this joy, this just old-fashioned happiness, fun that a Christian can have. I love uh, to have fun. I don't know of hardly anybody that doesn't like to have fun. Um, I think I've just been really privileged to, to uh, now <clears throat> have been here 24 years, 25 years now after my college graduation and, and got to spend four years here in school. So I'm kind of walking around, and the things are obviously a little different now, as one of the preachers recently said, said there used to be a gym in here, a lot of memories from this gym back in the day. Um, but things bring up memories. Um, I'm on night guard still till, for another five years. That's, 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 that makes me happy. See my smile? Okay, there we go. Um, but, you know, uh, if you think, let's just say this. If you think Pastor Dameron is, is like, energetic now, <clears throat> you should have seen him in 1990. It was a sophomore in college. Uh, Mr. Olson, um, Dr. Vogelin, <laughs> up here leading, yeah, okay, so back in the day, yeah, that's a famous phrase, um, I'll just tell you there was a lot of fun happening. Don't think we broke too many rules on purpose for long. <laughs> Um, I, you know, the misnomer that there's no fun in, in serving the Lord. Um, I have a buddy who runs the finances of a church of, I don't know, a thousand Christian school, 400 out in Virginia. We went to college together here, four years, we graduated together, and, uh, co-workers at a local grocery store, um, that happened to put their glow-in-the-dark, full-face skull masks on sale around this time of year. And they let us off work at midnight after we closed. And we had to get from the grocery store home. We rode bikes. I'm not joking. We bought bikes and rode bikes to work all the way, all the way into Chesterton, two miles. Whoa. I mean, I'm glad we don't applause in here because I know right now you're holding it back from that tremendous skill of athleticism and dexterity. We're on our bikes at midnight. 
didn't ask for them to put the full face glow in the dark skull mask on sale. They just did. <laughs> Not good with our money, apparently, that night. But we had to get home. It was chilly because it was fall. Wear a hoodie, right? You wear a hoodie when it's fall, right? You wear a hoodie, you know, the hood. So uh, if you put those masks by the light, too, does it like some, like, chemical, you know, interaction take place and it makes them glow more? Is that like an old wives' tale? I don't know. It worked good that night. So we put the glowing masks on. Just riding back to Fairhaven down the roads of Chesterton at 12.30 a.m. Truly did not mean to scare the lady that was driving her car. We didn't mean to. We go out of our way to, but kind of pop your hands off the bike handlebars there and wave at her a little bit. Just friendly <laughs> zombies driving down the road. I mean, isn't that what people usually do that time of night? But her face was funny. It was funny. It was worth it just to see that. Um, but uh, I was a little slower than my, my friend there. He was out front. So I was able to see the red and, and the blue lights uh, glowing off his back um, there that night. At, now it's about 1240. Um, I saw it first because, you know, it's reflection, how that works there. It's like red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. I'm like, it brings back memories where I was 16 years old and just got my driver's license and got pulled over for speeding in a city park running a stop sign and reckless driving, all that. I forgot to put the um, registration and the insurance card in the glove box because it just has state inspection too. And I remember driving in that white Volkswagen Beetle, seeing red, blue, red, blue. It brought back memories. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been here before. Never been on a bike at 1240 with this mask on my face before with the red, blue combo going on. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we did meet uh, one of Chesterton's finest there that evening, who um, at the end, when we, you know, like the, the old wrestlers, we, we unveiled the mask, like the mask came off, um, <clears throat> and he saw that we were human, <laughs> indeed were humans underneath there. Um, he, he did slightly partake in our blessedness. Am I stretching the text here? But in our happiness, he, he, he kind of saw where we're coming from, but he did implore us, you know, in certain terms, to go ahead and uh, stay unmasked for the remainder of our ride home, uh, which he did, unfortunately, get out of us that, oh, yeah, we're Fairhaven Baptist College so sophomores here, us. Us too. You heard of Fairman's little Bible college up the road? They're training serious students for God's service is our motto. And um, so we're, we're, we're seriously going to get there real fast <laughs> and uh, probably put these masks in, uh, like in our closet or something, like because we're serious about it, sir. So away we went with a memory of our first near arrest. Fairview Baptist College students that night. Um, the fact of the matter is there's actually a wholesome fun that everybody can have in the place and the time where God puts you, no matter where that's at. I'm not from this area, not in, not in love with Northwest Indiana. Uh, any one of you, probably you want to tell me how awesome the place is that you grew up is. I mean, you're going to tell me, the, the, where I'm from is like, there's no place like it. you got to, it's the best. And, 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 and most here are going to say, you know, okay, Pam, all right, you got a point. Don't rub, stop rubbing it in. It's like, I'm from Alaska. We're the last frontier. We're, you know, we out there, we kill bears, and we like gut them and eat them on, on the spot. <laughs> sometimes we cook them, sometimes we don't, because we're from Alaska. Okay, so I'll give you that, okay? Then we got Mr. Schrock. You hang around him, he's going to tell you there's no place like Missouri. He's got, he's got disciples in here, too. There's no place like Missouri. And, and we, 
we kind of just put up with that, you know what I'm saying? The, the Missouri people there, um, we put up with that. Um, I have some bus workers that are awesome. I really mean that, and here's why. Because I watch them, they've been on the bus for a long time, but I watch them. They don't just do the game on the bus, they, they actually are enjoying the game with the kids. They're playing the game with the kids. And the kids are having fun, and it's not, I'm the worker, you're the kids. They're enjoying the bus game. They're enjoying the verse. And what's happening that whole time is there's some little girls and boys out there that are saying, man, this life actually, people are, they're actually happy. They, they, they're, they're enjoying this. What, I don't really see this at school as much. I don't see this at home. What is it about that life where they can be actually enjoying talking to me and they're asking me questions and and they they even without knowing it are starting to think about this Christian life and it's not necessarily just because of the verse uh, that they read or, or, or the verse that they learned it's that but it's also look at this look at the fun these Christians are having this is I would like this I would like that life I'd like to know more about that and so um there's a counterfeit to having fun. We know that. Uh, there's counterfeits to having fun, and the devil's great at counterfeiting things. Um, but we could make ourselves uh, aware of that by asking maybe this test. After you've done something, do you want to remember it, or would you rather forget it? There's a good test for whether something was, maybe it was funny or was humorous when we did it, but afterwards, are we something we want to kind of talk with people about, tell the story about, or we'd rather wish you, I wish I had a like to forget that. It's a good test for us about what is and is not fun. Turn to Proverbs 17.22. Proverbs 17.22. Oh, by the way, in college, it also helped, yeah, John Titus bringing the, K, uh, the, the long johns home at 12.30, you know, meeting in the bathroom there, and he had the leftover chicken and fish and hush puppies from, from LJS. It settled in just fine. Till the next morning. <laughs> That's when you just got to rinse it down with that two liter of Mountain Dew. Why, why put it in a cup when you're going to drink the whole thing anyway? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mary Hart, Bible says here, Proverbs 17, 22, a Mary Hart <clears throat> doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. I do think there's a kind of correlation to happiness and health. Um, and to sourness and, um, uh, and, and being ill or sick. The Bible here says, A merry heart does good like a medicine. Uh, joy and happiness, wholesome fun um, is a medicine. It's, I think, an antibiotic. It fights off a lot of things when a heart is truly joyful. One of the things that takes joy away from our heart is when we're doing things or we're saying things or we've done things that bring guilt. Guilt will just be like a heavy load on our heart uh, and work against, um, work against us. It's our enemy. Um, but to combat that, we combat that with a confession and then with just living clean and having fun along the way. Um, no one wants to go through life miserable. No one wants to uh, uh, f be around people that are miserable. But God gave us the capacity to enjoy things. We can be joyful. Paul says this in Philippians. Uh, some Bible commands. Number one, rejoice. Number two, be exceeding glad. That's not just be glad. That's be exceeding glad. Number three, uh, be blessed or happy, as we see here in Psalm 1-1. What are some steps, practical, very practical steps to happiness uh, that we can see uh, today. Some steps to being happy. Uh, number one is don't sit around. Don't sit around. The Bible says the best ability, or not the Bible, a man once said the best ability is availability. This is volunteering. This is uh, uh, when the, you get home in the summer and the church uh, has a sign-up sheet for cutting the grass sign up on there and, and, and help uh, be a part of that cutting the grass. Uh, let your name, if it's something over Christmas, the church put, the, anytime there's a sign up sheet for something at, 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 at home, put, put your name on it. Volunteer for that. Are right, you going to have VBS, cookies and drink, make cookies for VBS. 
Put your name down a couple times. It's not that hard, right? I mean, two dozen, one dozen. I mean, just make cookies and bring volunteer. Look for that opportunity to to to, to jump uh, in their missionary projects. Maybe your boxes for missionaries or letters to missionaries. Uh, Christmas cards uh, to missionary kids. Hey, ladies can wait, write the wives of the of the missionaries. That's great encouragement uh, to get good news from a far country. And it doesn't take much time. It just takes a little bit of initiative and volunteering uh, for that. Uh, be the type of guy that lends a hand. I, I, you ever met somebody like that? I, I, I was blessed to have a grandfather who was like, I mean, he was just ready to lend a hand anytime with whatever needed to be done. It could, he might not even know about it, but if something was going on, he's just the type of guy that's there. Hey, what are you doing? What do you, what do you need? Those type of people are invaluable to have, especially uh, in, a, in a church. Just be that lend a hand type of person. Um, a few years back, I got to visit the Olsons in Zambia, and uh, we... Uh, through the course of the couple weeks there, drove a lot of places. I was talking with Mr. Olson about some old college memories, and uh, one of the first memories I have of him was we got here, and in the fall we used to uh, have a farmer that uh, had a that grew lots of watermelons and would sell them to us for real cheap. So one of the uh, days in the fall was uh, to give every uh, – a lot of kids got watermelons. I think most did, maybe all. Anyway um, – but, you know, they didn't magically just appear here at church. They had to be, we had to go to the field. We took a couple buses, and uh, we would then make the, uh, the, uh, the lineup. So somebody's down there in the watermelon, is it a patch? Pumpkin patch, and is a watermelon patch too? Do pumpkins and watermelons share that term, patch? It works for both. Anyway, uh, I just know that they were down there, and it re- required bending over in, in the uh, mosquito-infested field. And we had to do it in the evening when the mosquitoes were, were like, yeah, bring on the Fairhaven kids. Been waiting all year for this feast. And uh, so you're getting sprayed with uh, bug spray, and the fields are m- very muddy, and we're th- throwing watermelons back and forth. I'm thinking I signed up for Bible college and I am passing watermelons between <laughs> Mr. Olson and this guy that I don't even know who he is. How you doing, Mr. Olson? I, I am not sure who you are. For several hours, filling a bus full of watermelons. So people are on the bus, handing watermelons over top of the bus seats, putting them under the floor and on the seats and stacking the watermelons. The bus was filthy. We were filthy. But I remember Mr. Olson and I side by side there and we talk about that night. He wore a shirt. He's Swedish. And his shirt was, you can tell a Swede, but you can't tell him much. Oh, well, that's what it said, you know, so one of those statement shirts is like, okay, you're Swedish, can't tell you much. I see that. Um, So we talked about the happiness from just jumping in, volunteering. Not everybody got to go, not everybody could go, but some didn't go that could have, but they missed out because jumping in, and, and, and not sitting around and getting going and being a doer always brings happiness as opposed to being a, a spectator or a hold back person. So don't sit around. Number two, like this, steps to happiness is participate. Jump in the action. But I'll look dumb, people say. But I'll look dumb. Did you check the mirror out this morning anyway? You're preloaded with that. So might as well be active looking dumb than sitting there looking dumb. That's all of us. Participating makes you an interesting person. Makes you an interesting person. Gives you experiences to learn from and to teach others about. You're not going to learn and have experiences to teach others, particularly maybe of your children one day, if you're not a participator. Kids, back in the day, let me tell you what I did. I had this chair. Really comfortable. I could sit in that chair like a boss. I'm telling you, no one sat in that chair like moi. You should see the way occasionally... I crossed my legs. (laughs) It made it on to Skipple one year. Didn't quite make it in the yearbook. Still bitter about that. 
It's my one chance to get my legs crossed, maneuver in the yearbook. But I'm telling you, kids, that chair. Someday, you grow up and be like me. Get you a chair. Use it thoroughly, completely, in every possible way. Hit the chair. Um, participation gives you experiences to learn from. It teaches you to work with others, right? Participation teaches you to work with others. In the ministry, you're going to be working with others. Uh, in every, any aspect of the ministry, a good layman is going to be working with others. You're going to get married one day. You're going to be working with at least one other uh, it develops your leadership abilities when you participate. And it gives you poise, gives you confidence when you participate. Jump in the action. Number three, try something new. If you're a beginner, admit it, and soon what you're going to find is a lot of help because people like to help people that are new at something, that are beginners at something. Um, for instance, if you're teaching, any of us that are teaching class, if a, if a student comes up, and wants to talk about the subject that's going on or has questions, or what about this book? Or what? That's joy for a teacher. I mean, what happens, teachers generally are teaching only a tiny bit of what they've studied because time constraints. But they often love the subject, and they've studied it, and they've kind of put a lot of time into it. So they love when people want to talk more about it. It happens rarely, but when it does, um, uh, this... A uh, learner is going to learn that much more because a teacher wants to impart uh, more than what they're able to have time to teach. You won't be a beginner long. Uh, we were up uh, doing some, a few years back, um, some, uh, a, a, a snow school. So it's a school, it's in the mountains out west, and it teaches you uh, how to um, hike in snow fields with crampons and an ice axe and how to stop yourself if you're sliding down uh, a mountainside that's covered in snow. And snow safety, we're up about 12,000 feet doing this little class. And the guy that was the teacher told us that not long before, the Navy SEALs sent the new recruits up there because among the, all the areas that they have to be experts at, it's this because they may be dropped into a alpine area and they have to know what to do and how to traverse snow fields, et cetera. And um, he said that many of these guys had never even skied before. And so and in addition to learning how to uh, safely walk on alpine mountains, uh, they had to learn how to ski. And they're like going to like a quadruple black, what we would say a quadruple black diamond for their first time ever. And he said though, he said as soon as they got up there, he said I knew I had a different breed of guys here because they are like on the edge of their seats, taking in everything that I'm saying, just waiting for me to say, okay, now you guys ski on down. And as soon as he said go, boom, off they went. Down, he says, no, they didn't look good. Uh, it, they went down probably a little too fast for their good or anybody else's good that's beneath them. Uh, but they were, in, they were just ready to jump in and just go for it. Um, so the moral of the story is... Um, just go ski and uh, go to the top of the mountain, close your eyes, and hope for the best. Um, but they had that spirit in them that's going to try something new. Sorry if, sorry if it's new. I'm just going to try it. I'm going to do it. Um, and that's how we learn. That's how we expand ourselves. Letter D, remember that your enjoyment, your happiness can be anywhere. Went to college with a guy who grew up in the desert, in the southwest, desert southwest, but in the desert of the desert southwest. And he was telling about how it was awesome. I mean, it was the best place he ever grew up. I mean, it was the best place to be. So I gave him that blank stare like that, but for longer. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, the Christian school that I went to, I'm thank the Lord for 12 years at Freedom Christian School. It doesn't exist anymore. I'm sad about that. That's the best place. I, I'm so proud to be have been Freedom Christian School. People are like, you went to Christian school and you had uniforms. Yeah, I went to Christian school, I had uniforms. You didn't get to, it's not what I didn't get to do, it's what I did get to do. And it was on and on and on and on, and I am so grateful uh, for that. And we had a blast at Freedom Christian School. We had a blast in college. I mean, we had fun. And if fun is wrong, uh, I'm going to have to confess a lot because Fairview Baptist College was, was, ex, was, was, was amazing. Uh, and, uh, you know, just getting around the right people, and uh, pushing away 
some of the junk, getting rid of some of that sin out of the mind, words, thoughts, music. Then there's this whole world of just absolute wonderful fun um, that God has available uh, for us. Some things are not needed to have fun. We don't need to go to a worldly place to have fun. We don't need to play the fool to have fun. We don't need off-color jokes or snickering about double-meaning phrases to have fun. We don't need that to have fun. That's the devil's counterfeit fun. That's not necessary. It's like the devil who came to Eve and says, uh, you know, God gave you, God gave you these millions of trees, but you can't have fun unless you go to this one tree and eat of it. Then you're going to, but I know that's the way it is. The world wants to turn that around. The world wants to portray it like you can only do this one or two things and then all this other stuff's off limits for you. That's not what the Bible pictures. The Bible pictures in the Garden of Eden, there's one tree, sin. All the rest was theirs to freely eat, right? The devil's lie is that you're restricted to this and your happiness is really restricted and fun. Good luck finding any of that. You're a Christian. You're an independent fundamental Baptist. You're not allowed to have fun. That's the devil's lie. It's the same thing he used on Eve. You're missing something, Eve. Yeah, God's holding. He's not good. He's keeping you from something that you really want that's going to be good. No, no, no. That's, no. that's not it. That's the opposite. It's the opposite. Um, so there's some areas that maybe result in joy and happiness or in guilt and shame. So here's some areas that we can have a great time, Christian fun and enjoyment and happiness and rejoicing in, or... They can be used by the devil's counterfeit to bring us guilt and shame. One is entertainment. Entertainment um, is a Bible word. Oh, entertainment? We're going to talk about inter entertainment? Well, that's a Bible word. The Bible says some have entertained angels on earth. Entertainment, biblically, uh, uh, means um, to show hospitality to. And um, <clears throat> so, sin is not fun, but entertainment can be fun. Entertainment that sin is not fun. Entertainment has every uh, potential of being uh, very fun. Use this time in college to make some personal decisions and erect some personal standards about TV, movies, DVD, and social media. Not college rules, your findings from the Bible, your personal standards. You erect fences. Don't just wait for everybody else to erect the fences of protection in your life. At some point, you need to grab some of those fence posts and say, mm, okay, I see this in Scripture. Here's, here's my fence post right here. Here it is. And uh, I'm going to put a fence line up right here. I'm going to protect from some stuff. I'm going to protect from this. Why? Because I don't want everything just walking through my life. I don't want everything and anything walking through my mind. I'm going to protect uh, this. I'm going to establish some personal personal standards, personal decisions about these things. Lifelong decisions, not college rules. Use your Bible in an honest, clean heart. And, you'll, uh, and, and when you do that, you'll find uh, the Bible has much to say uh, about this. So, entertainment, though, it's not a bad word. It's a Bible word to show hospitality to. Music is another area. Music is enjoyable, particularly music that's not tainted with worldly sounds and lyrics. Uh, music can convey truth and perspective like nothing else. Music can convey God's truth in a unique way. Drink deeply from the well of right music, and there's a ton of good music, a ton of it. And uh, take it in, and that will increase your joy and your happiness because music has a way, I don't understand it all, but has a way of getting right down into your soul. There's a bunch of music ready for those walking with the Lord. There's a bunch of music ready for those drifting from the Lord. There's a bunch of music, plenty, an immense amount, ready for those that are walking with the Lord. There's all kinds of music ready for those that are drifting from the Lord. You know where you stand largely by the type of music you crave at that time. Let that be a test for us. Your thoughts. A world of joy and happiness exists in the thoughts of someone following Psalm 1-1. A world of joy and happiness exists in the thought life 
of someone that is following the Lord. Every area of Philippians 4, 8 could be expanded a thousand, a thousand times. Finally, my brethren, what sort of things are, and you know the list. Expect God. You, your mind is clean and right. Here's what you can expect. You can expect God to bring multiple things to your mind every single day when you're walking with him. God is going to bring multiple things to your mind if you're living clean. It's open. It's ready. You, f- you feasted on the word in the morning. You be meditating on it through the day. And then God's going to give you ideas to improve your ministry. God's going to give you bring to your mind people who need encouragement or prayer. God is going to bring to your mind names of those who you really need to witness to. God is going to uh, bring to your mind uh, uh, remembrance of what you read that morning to meditate on. And that's, that's a fun life. When I can just expect throughout the day God to be in my thoughts and God to bring these real specific things for me to do. I mean, God's dealing with me individually Oh, there's no counterfeit sin that's worth uh, losing that for. That's an exciting life. And, and uh, your mind becomes extremely powerful when it's under the control of the Holy Spirit. That's when the old hymn writers of the past started writing hymns because their mind was clear and clean of the sin. So, so God just had their mind, had access down to them. And they're writing hymns. And preachers are getting uh, uh, excited because they're getting messages from God in their minds and they're writing those messages down. And man, before their mind is that person that needs witness to. And you know, they don't leave it there. They write them, they call them, they go see them. Those kids pop in your mind during the week that you see on Sunday. They, they actually come into your mind on Monday and Tuesday. And you start thinking, I wonder what they're doing right now. I wonder where they're at school right now. What are they hearing right now? How can I help them better on Sunday? What can I do to make a difference there? That's a, that's a, for me, that's a fun way to live. That's a fun type of life to have. And, and your, your friends, a good friend uh, is uh, going to be available to a Christian living with joy and happiness. Um, uh, old philosopher said a friend is like a second self. And um, so... Uh, a good friend is one who's alive and interesting and, and can always think of something wholesome to do. Always think of something good to do. Not settling for uh, something that's, uh, that's wrong or questionable. Something good. It's a good friend. God will bring those into, uh, into your life. So our question, can a Christian have fun? I think we know the truth to that. A Christian can have fun. The next question that follows in conclusion is, is will we? Will we have fun God's way? We can. We have a whole world, just like Eve. There was one thing God said, just stay away from that. Aside from that sin, Eve, you've got this whole world of joy and happiness. It's paradise. For a Christian, just stay away from the sin. You've got a whole world that the world, the world cannot compare cannot compare to the tremendous blessed happiness that comes to the Christian who's just going to uh, abstain from sin but delight in God, delight in God's ways. God's going to use you. God will let you have fun along the way too. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray.